In this week's episode of SEO Lunch, we cover the mysterious H1 tag. How many should you have on one page? Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode number 64 of SEO Lunch. I'm your host, Dan, of the team at Slocum Studio and Embrace WP. And SEO Lunch is your weekly look at the latest and greatest inbound marketing tips, search engine optimization tricks, and other elements to improve your websites. We talked about um, heading tags in the past, heading one, heading two, heading three tags. Um, but today's going to focus on the heading one tag and sort of how Google ranks it and what you should be doing about it. All the time when we run uh, SEO reports for our clients, we find a lot of H1 tags on their websites. And it's a little bit um, misleading the way WordPress writes it, and it also can lead uh, the client down a dark path where the website isn't ranking properly. So what we're going to do today is kind of address the heading one tag and sort of what you can do um, to optimize your headings and optimize your keywords, um, particularly using WordPress. But, you know, this can be applied to any website, you know, WordPress or not. Um, would recommend using WordPress if you're not? Absolutely. Um, it's very easy to use and the text editor is very, very user friendly um, and gives you the heading options right there, as well as a lot of other keyword options and helpful plugins to also help with SEO. But enough about that. Let's talk about the heading tag, shall we? Um, because with, with WordPress is really misleading. You have your title, so you enter the title of your uh, of your post, and then you go to the content. And the first thing you see other than text is this big option to put a heading into your WordPress post. So of course I'm going to do it. It's a heading one tag. It has the biggest splash and I want my keywords to make a splash. Here's the problem though. Typically titles on WordPress are going to post as what are called H these H1 tags or heading one tags. And Google, according to their algorithm, only likes to have one heading one tag per page on, on, on the website. What this means is that if my title of my post is a heading one tag and I put even one other heading one tag in my content below or wherever it might be, I'm getting slapped by Google immediately and my website's down ranking, which isn't good because now people aren't going to see your website on an organic search on Google search engine results page, which isn't good. Um, so what's the recommendation? Well, if you scroll down just below that heading one tag, you're going to notice heading two, heading three, heading four, and so on and so forth. These are what you want to use when you're writing content on WordPress because the H1 tag is only going to hinder your, um, your WordPress efforts. Now, the way this works is, just as you might think, it does it sort of hierarchically. So I have my heading one tag here, and there should only be the one. And then you can sprinkle some H2 tags in there, and then you can kind of be a little bit more liberal with H3 tags and so on and so forth. You wouldn't want to have, you know, a 1,000 word article on, on WordPress and have all 1,000 words be H2 tags, for example, because that would also be misleading on keywords and what people are trying to rank for. And Google would also penalize you for that. So you want to use H2 tags sparingly, but use them, and then use H3 tags a little bit more liberally to break up content on your website. So when you're writing those longer form articles, you really want to be able to have those, those H2 and H3 tags to break up the content and also explain to people what it is they're reading about in that section, because it's always helpful. If there's a, just a giant block of text, it's just too, too much stuff, and I don't want to read your article. In the web world, we call it TLDR or too long, didn't read. When you are making these H2 tags, H3 tags, and also writing your title, make sure you're optimizing it for the keywords you want to hit for as well. Because you only have that one chance in the title um, with WordPress or with, with most websites, with any website for that matter, to get the H1 right, make sure that that H1 is optimized for the keywords in the market that you're trying to reach. Likewise, if you're breaking up content with H2 and H3 tags, try to incorporate some of your keywords and some of your ideas inside of those tags so that the titles sort of speak to what people are going to be searching for. For example, if I'm searching for the best recipe for pizza sauce, I might want to call my article the best recipe for pizza sauce and then reference those, you know, recipe for pizza sauce throughout my tags or something similar or some other keywords that I might be hitting for that aren't just the best recipe for, uh, for pizza sauce. So those are a couple of tips for optimizing keywords on your site. Again, to kind of recap, one H1 tag, a few H2 tags and a little bit more liberal H3 tags. Optimize those keywords, spread out the content, allow people to stay on your website, read, and also find your site on Google because that's really important. 
If you don't know what sort of keywords you have, what sort of H1 tags or H2 tags you have on your website, we can run a full audit of your website and let you know. Um, please contact us at embracewp.com slash contact and contact us about our affordable uh, SEO audits. Uh, they're really awesome and really, really effective uh, for your website. Um, if you have any more questions, please comment below or contact us at the aforementioned contact form on Embrace WP. Subscribe to us up there with the big old red subscribe button. Uh, we're almost at 4,000 fans at the time of this video, which is really, really cool. Getting there, getting there. Please help us out. Um, as always, thank you for watching.